The rationale is that um, uh, well-differentiated thyroid cancer, which is the most common thyroid cancer, and thyroid cancer by itself is the most common endocrine cancer, um, is uh, very frequently treated with something called radioactive iodine. Um, and radioiodine is often thought to be very safe. Um, at the same time, for um, well-differentiated thyroid cancer with low or intermediate risk disease phenotypes, uh, there's no real proven clinical benefit of the use of radioiodine. It has been proven for high risk disease, but not for low or intermediate risk disease. Um, but the thought is, well, it's, it's safe and we can ablate the remnant thyroid tissue with it, um, so it's still being used. So generally, uh, when a patient presents itself with this type of well-differentiated thyroid cancer, um, he or she ha is often very young, um, 45 years of age is the median age, and he or she has uh, an overall survival that exceeds, well, 95, 97% uh, exceeds five-year survival rates. So it has a very good prognosis. Um, and treated with r radioactive thiodine after uh, a surgery on the thyroid is performed, but no one has ever really looked at the uh, specific risks of the radioiodine for the development of uh, a second primary cancer. And we know from the literature um, that acute myeloid leukemia is the leukemia that is one of the most significantly associated with the development uh, after uh, rad radiation exposure. Um, so either from external beam radiotherapy and we, we hypothesized it could also be for radioiodine. Um, so we conducted uh, a population-based study in the American uh, SEER database um, and it contained over 150,000 thyroid cancer patients since the 1970s, uh, about 50-50 treated with radioiodine or surgery alone. And we observed well, pretty striking increased risks of developing AML after radioiodine treatment. Um, and what is important is that, um, of course, patients with a thyroid cancer who later develop AML after uh, uh, being treated for the thyroid cancer have a worse uh, prognosis than thyroid cancer patients who don't develop AML. And we also know that AML that is caused by conventional radiotherapy or conventional chemotherapy has a worse uh, prognosis than AML that spontaneously occurs. And we've seen that it's also the same for AML that occurs after radioiodine treatment. So basically to summarize, um, radioiodine is not a, a, a proven therapy for low or intermediate risk uh, thyroid cancer, but it increases the risk of the development of uh, leukemia, including AML at the same time. And then if a patient gets leukemia, it also has a worse prognosis than spontaneously occurring leukemia.